Welcome back to Blockchain Pill. My name is Alex and today we'll watch another video of Dominic Williams speaking at EdCon 2023. Usually most videos where Dominic is presenting the Internet Computer Protocol are a must watch. We will go through them together to get the best bits to save you time and to give you my perspective on what Dominic is talking about. So without further ado, let's jump in. Dominic Williams, EdCon 2023. So let's check it out. All right. Hello, everyone. Um... I'm really glad to be here. I, I was last at EdCon in uh, 2017. Yeah. Who was here in 2017? Yeah, nice. Uh, it seems like a lifetime ago now, but anyway, glad to be back. I'm going to talk about, um, you know, realizing the world computer vision uh, by combining uh, Ethereum with the internet computer. And uh, to give you some perspective, um, you know, Bitcoin appeared, you know, um, in 2009 and gave us digital gold. Um, Ethereum launched in 2015 and gave us smart contracts. Um, and then finally, the internet computer launched in 2021 and produced something you can think of uh, rather like a crypto cloud. It's a blockchain, but it uses a very different architecture, a lot of uh, super interesting uh, advanced math and cryptography. And you see these kind of um, innovations come about every six years or something. So um, what, is, what does this world computer do? Like if you can combine um, different chains and you can add crypto cloud functionality, um, one of the things it can do is trustless multi-chain. So uh, the internet computer can interact with other blockchains uh, without, without bridges. Um, you can build absolutely anything on it. So you could build um, you know, a mass market social network that will run end-to-end uh, -end in a decentralized way. Um, you can assign Web3 services to DAOs, and not just in the sense that, you know, people vote on proposals, and if some bit of text gets enough votes, someone goes away with a backdoor key and, 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 and implements the proposal, but with full automation. And you can integrate with Web2. So it's a big potential game changer. And the internet computer is the glue that makes this possible, and it's powered by this thing called chain key crypto. The objective um, of the Internet Computer Project and, and the Definity Foundation generally is, is to solve this sort of fundamental problem where um, Web3 still primarily runs on centralized technology. And that, that's where um, hackers head, regulators head, sensors head, gatekeepers head, vested interests head. And generally, the continued use of centralized technology is at the the root of most most of the problems that occur. He is 100% correct. So although some services that are in the crypto space right now are being advertised as Web3, the reality is that only the transactions are happening on chain. We see that with Ethereum, with Solana, and with basically any other chain. Whereas only on the Internet Computer Protocol, are we able to host any dApp from A to Z, everything on chain. We get the benefits of the blockchain without the downsides of it being slow because the internet computer protocol has tremendously fast speeds. We want to end what we might refer to as a kind of decentralization theater where 99.9% um, of compute in the Web3 space remains on centralized tech. So, um, you know, here's a typical architecture where Web3 is running on Amazon Web Services. And the problem is that the platform owner here, um, Jeff Bezos, is ultimately a controller um, of the platform. And the developer is um, also a kind of controller of the Web3 that runs there because it's their credit card that's been put into the service and they get a username and password and they can just go in and arbitrarily um, change data and content and um, inject malicious code if they want to. And that, of course, means that you can't run that Web3 under the control of a DAO because a DAO um, can't control what's running on Amazon Web Services. The way this uh, is solved is through the world computer. And this vision of the world computer is one which is all-encompassing, where actually, in the end, everything, every system and service that you can imagine, Every single system and service you can imagine runs 100% on the blockchain. You know, this opens, uh, I mean, has, has the advantages in, in, of removing those weak centralized points, but also enables new things like full, auto, full automation with DAOs, where DAOs have complete control, there's no backdoors, um, the software updates, the Web3 software updates go through the DAO. 
the whole thing. Since the internet computer um, has launched, you know, we've seen an emergence of quite interesting uh, ecosystem and new things have become possible. So to get a sense of it, um, I don't know if you can see on the screen, um, yeah, you can, the, the address bar of this um, browser window. It looks like a traditional crypto exchange, like a CFI exchange. But if you look in the web browser address bar, you'll see there's a set of strange string of numbers. That's because what you're actually looking at is the address of a canister small contract. And that canister small contract is serving the user experience into the browser. So one of the tricks um, the internet computer allows you to um, perform is having a small contract serve the uh, dynamic user experience. And you can do this in a way where you have the blockchain pre-sign assets like HTML and JavaScript. Um, and there's a service worker in the browser that's verifying something called a chain, chain key signature. But this is an order book exchange. This is like a CFI exchange. Um, you've got market orders, limit orders, um, fill or kill, and all, all of this is happening on the chain itself. We have been using IC Lighthouse, the decentralized order book exchange that Dominic just mentioned right now. It works exactly as intended. It, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this exchange and a centralized exchange, basically. The whole thing is hosted on chain. So just think about that. We don't have the volumes that you would normally have on a centralized exchange, but as the Internet Computer Protocol ecosystem grows, so will the volumes on all DEXs. Something called Open Chat. This is 100% um, on chain Web3 messaging service. Every chat message is a transaction, and all of the contents stored on the internet computer itself. So um, even if a message is video or an image, um, it's living on chain. And of course, the user experience is being served into a browser, is also being served by smart contracts. There are two especially interesting aspects of this service. One is that it runs under the control of the single service nervous system DAO, which also upgrades the software. So it's more than just something where we vote on a text proposal. It's actually an, a decentralized operational framework where um, you can update a running Web3 service. Um, a bit like, you know, um, Git is, and, and Git, you know, GitHub provides a framework for managing an open source project, if, if you want. Um, the other um, interesting piece of this is that it, it, it's, it's multi-chain. And you can do things like send crypto with chat messages. And in fact, your um, messaging account is a wallet. The app itself creates a wallet and you can store there your ICP or other ICP ecosystem tokens. Whenever you talk to somebody, you can send them payments and it's all happening seamlessly. And even more interesting than that, everything that you send or happens through the app, it is a transaction happening on the blockchain. And the cool thing is users don't have to pay for those transactions because on the Internet Computer Protocol, we have a reverse gas fee model. It's the app itself and the developers who pay for that. The Internet Computer's uh, integrated at the network level with Bitcoin. Internet Computer nodes speak to Bitcoin nodes and um, smart contracts on the internet computer are able to create Bitcoin transactions without having private keys. The chain key crypto signs the Bitcoin transactions. Of course, this is hidden behind easy to use APIs. You can just um, say, give me a Bitcoin address, receive Bitcoin, send it. The next phase uh, is integrating with Ethereum, again, at the network level. Um, you're gonna have bi-directional calling between canister smart contracts on the internet computer and uh, EVM small contracts on Ethereum. And this bi-directional calling will be possible without a bridge. So you'll only be ex exposed to the, the security um, concerns of two different blockchains rather than additionally being exposed to the concerns of a bridge. And that's a very, very big deal. Also re removes all the latency and things like that. We are already starting to see people starting to use it. We've seen Bionic, a Bitcoin orderless marketplace, leveraging CKBTC, make it possible for people to use the network without paying the huge fees on Bitcoin. We'll see in the future what else people are going to start using CKETH for. Uh, I work at the Definity Foundation, uh, based in Switzerland. Uh, there's no company involved in the Internet Computer Project. Established in uh, 2016, uh, research that began in 2015, um, we're not for profit. Um, we actually have, I think, the world's largest team of uh, famous and well cited cryptographers. Um, probably the biggest R&D team in crypto, and it's been running um, for years. 
about 270 plus people globally. There are over 270 people working to build the Internet Computer Protocol. Those are smart people, like the best of the best people coming from Google and IBM. Top companies are coming to build this vision of the Internet Computer Protocol. Internet Computer isn't proof of stake. It's, it uses something called uh, proof of useful work. And um, that means that it uses um, crypto protocol to combine these things called node machine devices that are run by independent people and, and uh, run from data centers all over the world. And these nodes are combined to create subnet blockchains, and that's how the internet computer scales its capacity. And these subnet blockchains are obviously host um, and, and re replicate canister small contracts, which I think I mentioned can run concurrently on a subnet, but it's done det deterministically. And together, you know, all these subnets um, are combined using um, chain key crypto to produce a single, scalable, and efficient virtual computer that hosts canister smart contracts. Another aspect of the internet computer is um, it's what's known as an adaptive blockchain. It's the, it's the world's first adaptive blockchain. And that means that it's self-governing. So it has a DAO called the network nervous system that's integrated into its protocols. And again, this is a kind of operational framework. There are no kind of centralized parties with backdoor keys or organizing um, you know, miners to upgrade. Um, this network nervous system um, is completely open and permissionless, and people submit proposals to it to structure the network, create new subnet blockchains, um, upgrade the protocol, and, and, and things like that. And through that, it just continually evolves. In the two years it's now been running in production, um, the internet computer blockchain has been upgraded more than 145 times. More than 145 protocol upgrades have taken place. Um, and that's thanks to the sort of reduced friction of having a DAO integrated with the protocol that's actually up, able to upgrade the whole thing. Um, for example, pushing out software upgrades to the actual node machines, um, devices that, that host the network. So capabilities, the network nervous system, <clears throat> if you like a kind of master DAO that controls the network, is also a DAO factory. It creates these things called service nervous system sub DAOs. And this is a really rather recent development people are beginning uh, to use now. And, you can basically propose that you want something that's running fully on chain um, to run as almost like a blockchain extension under the control of a sub DAO um, that maintains its own microeconomy, of course, um, and it'll run things, uh, something called a decentralization swap, where the governance tokens are swapped for other tokens with the community, and the DAO maintains um, control of the tokens received in its treasury. Um, and that actually um, provides for all kinds of new Web3 paradigms where you can kind of founderize users by giving them governance tokens. Um, we have currently seen, I think, around 16 SNS DAOs functioning on the Internet Computer Protocol. 16 projects built the product, uploaded everything on chain, and given the control to the new token holders. Users can directly interact with canister smart contracts from any browser. So you don't need a, um, thanks to the way it works, you don't need like a local client to interact securely. Um, you can actually directly interact with smart contracts as you saw with the DEX. You don't authenticate yourself with a wallet, you can build a wallet, but you actually authenticate using something called Internet Identity, which is integrated with WebAuthn. The key is stored on your device, like in your laptop or your phone, inside the TPM most modern devices have. Um, and that'll actually create a session for you. So the, as you interact with the Web3 service, that's obviously generating transaction calls, right, remote, remote procedure calls. That's hidden because you created a session. This is where it gets kind of interesting. The, the, the results of these RPC transaction calls um, are signed um, by the blockchain using a single master public uh, chain key. And that chain key will tell you not only that the transaction ran against the smart contract with those, the parameters provided and it produced that result, but that it hasn't been tampered with, and also that, that the blockchain is running correctly. Um, and, and this magic is, is possible, e even though the, the node machine devices have different public keys. Um, and as you can imagine, as this thing scales out, you gains more and more um, subnet blockchains, um, which are kind of invisible. These aren't like avalanche subnets. They're actually combined into a single blockchain. Um, and, and this sort of um, you know, thing that can scale in an unbounded way um, has a single 48-byte um, um, master chain key. And um, 
of course, the nodes don't have some private key or something like that. And when you actually interact, you're not getting back a single signature. It's a compound signature, but it's a chain key. Internet computer canister smart contracts can, can interact with Web2 by something called HTTPS out calls. Um, and bearing in mind that um, this is being integrated at the network level with Ethereum, this means that Ethereum smart contracts will have the same functionality. Um, and what happens is these canister smart contracts are run locally by the node machines, normalize the results, the normalized results are passed um, to consensus, and if consensus is reached, um, it's passed to the smart contract. Um, and, and that supports Web2 interactions and decentralized oracles and things like that. Arguably, you don't even need an oracle with this functionality. This is where it gets uh, really cool. So the chain key crypto framework that powers the internet computer has been extended so that canister smart contracts can um, create ECDSA keys. And again, the ECDSA chain keys, so there's no private key. It's a sort of variation on threshold cryptography. This means you can uh, use a canister smart contract to, to sign pre pretty much anything. Other thing, of course, this makes possible is that the internet computer can enable canister smart contracts to interact with other chains without a bridge being involved because the internet computer allows kind of small contracts behind the scenes to create transactions um, on, a, on other chains. We use the integration with Bitcoin to create something called Chain Key Bitcoin, um, and uh, this is hopefully going to see some use in Dagano soon. Um, and it gives you an idea what you can do. Uh, the, the internet computer, by the way, its nodes talk to the Bitcoin nodes, and they pull um, blocks, maintain the UTXO set to make it easy for developers. And Chainkey, um, Bitcoin is just created with a trustless contract. It allows you to transfer Bitcoin with one second finality at an incredibly low cost, like thousands of a cent. The important thing, of course, uh, for everyone here is that Ethereum integration is coming and you're going to be able to um, call directly into the internet computer um, from Ethereum smart contracts. And that will provide um, dApps on, the, on Ethereum with access to things like, uh, you know, decentralized, trustless uh, web serving, unbounded scaling, incredible efficiency. So our aim has always been to find ways of making blockchain more efficient than traditional IT. And if anyone's curious about that, um, catch me later and I'll explain how it's technically possible. Um, another thing that's coming on the internet computer is, is AI. Web3 AI is very much at the heart of um, where we're going now. And it's going to be possible to spin up uh, AI models and call into AI models from Ethereum itself. So um, that's it. I kind of run out of time. We've got an ICP event tonight, so if you want to know more, um, please come along. If you take that QR code, you can get the event bright or whatever it is form. Um, and we'd love to see you there and, and talk more about uh, Ethereum internet computer integrations and the things that are possible. Thanks. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that ICP is not a competitor of BTC, is not a competitor of ETH or Solana or Avalanche or any other blockchains out there. What ICP does is help level up those blockchains and help them communicate with one another and raise the efficiency at which they can operate. So ICP, as Dominic mentioned earlier in the video, is the glue that is going to make the crypto world flourish. And that is the mission of the Internet Computer Protocol. So I hope you found this video insightful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.